الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك ولعظيم سلطانك سبحانك لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك لك الحمد كله ولك الشكر كله على ما أنعمت وأوليت يا رب العالمين اللهم كما أنعمت فأدم وزدنا من نعمك واجعلنا من الشاكرين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله الملك الحق المبين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله أرسله رحمة للعالمين وهدى وبشرى للمحسنين فبلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك وصل اللهم عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهديه واتبع سنته واقتفى أثره بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فيقول ربنا سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه العزيز وقل اعملوا فسير الله عملكم ورسوله والمؤمنون ثم تردون إلى عالم الغيب والشهادة فينبئكم بما كنتم تعملون Allah the Almighty says in the Quran and say work Allah will see the result of your work and his messenger and the believers and then you will return back to the Almighty who knows the unseen and the seen and then he will reward you accordingly when we read the Quran there are plenty of verses talking about action deeds work 360 verses in the Quran talks about action amal and amongst these verses there are verses talking about the good deeds, actions related to the akhirah, righteousness, taqwa, and so on, and actions related to the dunya, like seeking a job, earning your halal money, and the like of it. But nevertheless, it's been mentioned in two occasions in the Quran, in Surat An-Nisa and in Surat At-Tawbah, the opposite of action which is laziness. And the ayah was about Al-Munafiqeen, the hypocrites. وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا كُسَالَةِ When they want to pray, they just do it with laziness. So he mentioned one of the attributes of munafiq is to be lazy. In particular when he is doing his salah. So if we were to look at these two words, amal and kasal, action and laziness, we see that Allah Azza wa Jal always promoting action. Always telling the believers to do good deeds. Whether it's for the akhirah or whether it's for the dunya, for, to earn their living. He's always encouraging us to work. And to take the right action. To choose the right direction. To follow the right guidance. But sometimes 
without doubt out of our nature as humans we will fail we will be sometimes lazy we will commit mistakes how to deal with this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is our creator and he definitely knows that we have weaknesses as he stated clearly in the Quran min he created you from weakness وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا and The human has been created weak. So out of weakness, of course, we are not always in the best shape and form. We are not always in the very forefront. Sometimes we are, sometimes we are in the middle, sometimes we are in the back. How to regain your position again in the very forefront? Allah has created this system and mechanism to bring us back to the forefront, back to speed. So when we read the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet we can sense this, we can see this, we can feel this. For instance, the very famous hadith which we narrated in Muslim, when the Prophet says, Fear Allah wherever you are and follow up a bad deed with a good deed. It will wipe it out. And deal with people with good character. So the second statement in the hadith, follow up a bad deed with a good deed. It is acknowledging that we will do good, bad deeds and good deeds. When we do good deeds, that's praiseworthy worthy, and that's rewarded. But when we do bad deeds, when we fail, how to come back? The mechanism which we see here, follow a bad deed with a good deed. You've done something wrong, how to rectify this? Of course, after repentance and seeking forgiveness, but in order to spread goodness and bring yourself back to speed you have to follow up a bad deed with a good deed if we read behind these words and between the lines we see it's an invitation from the prophet وسلم, not to give up In the other hadith, the Prophet said, احرص على ما ينفع Seek whatever supports you and helps you. Be careful to seek what helps you and supports you. واستعن بالله ولا تعجب And seek help from Allah and don't be weak. <coughs> if you were, were to be left to yourself, you are weak. If you were to rely on Allah Azza wa Jal, <coughs> He will give you the power and the strength. So don't give up, even if you were to fail, even if you were to do mistakes, even if you have done many mistakes. <coughs> Come back, seek repentance, rectify what you have done, and start again. And it's a very famous story about Thomas Edison, the inventor. He's been fired twice from the first two jobs because he was an unproductive person. Twice. <coughs> and when he started his inventions, especially electricity and the bulb, he failed 999 times. The 1,000 he made it. And he's been interviewed by one of the journalists and he said, how was it, how does it feel after failure 1,000 times? 
He replied, he said, my invention did not fail 1,000 times. The way to success was 1,000 steps. This is how I made it. So I made it with 1,000 steps. Every time, he's not giving up. And this should be our nature, not to give up. As the Prophet ﷺ said, follow up a bad deed with a good deed. If we were to put it in the work context, if you fail, then keep trying. But not with the same way. Use another way. Use another technique. Use another principles. Not to do the same thing with the same circumstances because you will end up with the same result. Einstein once said, it's crazy enough to repeat the same thing in the same very circumstances and expect a different result. It's madness. This is his definition of madness. Madness is to repeat the same thing with the same circumstances and seeking a different result. It can't be. This is madness. So we learn from that that definitely if we were to fail and we are definitely failing in many things, let's try again Let's reassess the situation and not to give up. The moment we give up, shaitan will control our actions. And then we have no action. We have laziness. People will just go into depression, go into anti-depression pills, go into psychologists, psychiatrists, you name it. Then we have an antidote against depression. Follow up a bad deed with a good deed. Go and do something different. Do, go and try again in a different way, in a different manner, in a different circumstances. So the Prophet ﷺ was encouraging the believers not to give up at all. As long as you have the right direction, the right intention, the right preparation, then keep trying. Keep trying. The same, not only in our business, as well in our journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For those who are probably struggling in doing Qiyamul Layl, for those who are struggling in reciting the Quran, for those who are struggling to keep the Iman on the straight path, for those who are struggling in lowering the gaze, for those, and so on. We have plenty of things which we face on a daily basis. Don't give up. Keep trying. But use different techniques. Use different things. Don't keep doing the same thing and fall into the same hole again and again. And Prophet ﷺ, he said, لا يلدغ المؤمن من جحر واحد مرتين The believer should not be bitten from the same hole twice. So just you've been bitten through this direction, through this channel, then change it. This road, change it. This way, change it. But don't go in the same way, the same old habits, and then you will be beaten up by the shaitan again and again. Change your way of delivery. And above all, we need to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet sallallahu clearly said in the hadith, وَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَلَا تَعْجَزْ Seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be by your own because you are weak. And worse than that, if you have the wrong company. If you are alone, it's probably less harm than if you have the wrong company. So you have the shaitan and the wrong company, it's double evil. Then you have to change your style, you have to change your company. 
your companionship, your friends, if they are, for instance, what led you to the failure, what led you to some sins or mistakes, then it's crazy enough to just stick to them and then keep rolling these sins up and up and so on and so forth. So the Prophet وسلم, when he said, follow up a bad deed with a good deed, imagine that you have a blank carpet, white, and then every time you commit a mistake, there's a stain on that carpet, and you never cleaned it. And then another mistake, and another mistake, or sin, or failure, or whatever, and then it will be covered with mud. The mechanism of repentance and istighfar, it keeps it clean. Wash it, clean it, and look after it. And spreading goodness has to be in our <coughs> priorities. This is number one. Number two, if we were to commit mistake, if we were to fail, we shouldn't give up. Come back again and seek Allah's forgiveness. Come back again and try if it was a business or something else or entrepreneur uh, a project or whatever it might be the case. Then try. But seek the help of the specialists. If you couldn't make it by your own, then reassess the situation and try again. We've seen the story of that man who came to the Prophet وسلم, and he was failing in doing any business. So he has no money, he has nothing. But he's still young and strong and he asked the Prophet وسلم, to give him some money. First time he gave him, second time he gave him and he said, don't you have anything to say, to sell? He said, yes, but we have just two things I can think of. We can sell a wooden cup, which we use, and an old rug. He said, bring them on. He brought them to the mosque, the Prophet Sallallahu he said, who will buy these two for one dirham? Somebody said, I will. And he said, who will increase this bid? And this is where we get the permissibility of auctions. So who will increase it? Two, three, and so on. So whatever the, the final price was, he gave it to him and he said, go and chop some wood, sell it, and I don't want to see your face for 15 days. And he came back after 15 days with tender He said, what shall I do with that, Ya Rasulullah? He said, buy some food for yourself, for your family, some clothes, and then keep the rest, what we say in our terms today, inject it in the business. So he helped him to come back and do something good. This is on the business side. On the good deeds side, we see as well many times the Prophet Sallallahu <laughs> received some of the companions in the, in the mosque and he was saying, Wazunuba, Wazunuba, all my sins, all my sins. He said, what's wrong with you? He said, I have too many sins. He said, shall I teach you something better than that? He said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. He said, say, Allahumma maghfiratuka awsa' min dhunubi. Oh Allah, your forgiveness is greater than my sins. And your afia, which is making things better for me, is more hopeful for me than my own deeds. So it's again bringing him back to Allah Azza wa Jal, not to give up, even if you have mistakes, even if you have sins. 
even if you achieved failure in your business, there's always a way back. There's always a way out to achieve goodness. Keep trying. Don't give up. This is the message from the Prophet Sallallahu This is the message from the Quran. We see it across the verses of the Quran. Allah is encouraging us always to be active. To do actions and not to be lazy. And in the back, just laying down, doing nothing. This is not the Islamic position. The Islamic position is to be always active in goodness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our good deeds and enable us to do goodness always. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salatu wa salamu ala al-Nabi Mustafa wa alihi wa sahbihi wa man bi'ahdihi wa fa'ah. I've received a question this morning from a student. She said, I have dispute with my dad and I can't forgive him. So I'm suffering from this for so many weeks. I'm now depressed, locked myself up in my room 24 over seven. I can't eat properly. I can't go to school properly, I can't do this, I can't do that, what shall I do? I said, oh my God. I didn't go to the details, but nevertheless, whatever the case might be, we have to honor our parents. We have to forgive our parents. I said, you do a still far first to get rid of this heaviness in your chest against your parents. Do it so far hundred times in the morning and hundred times in the evening. And follow it with dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to soften your heart and to forgive your parents and forgive you. So I thought it's very silly sometimes to have anything in your heart against your parents. Allah Azza wa Jal when he talks about the parents. He said, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ يَحْسَانِ So he subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to, to worship none but him and be good to our parents. So we have to be good to our parents regardless if they were believers or not. But of course I'm saying this and taking into consideration they, the parents have no right to oppress their children under the banner that we are with your parents. No. They have as well to stick to the limits, not to overstep the limits. But the message here is that we have to deal with our parents with goodness and we have to deal with our children with goodness. And this is amongst the good deeds which Allah has mentioned in the Quran. Allahumma ya Rabbi ya Rahman. Ya Badi'a al-Samawati Ya Da Jalali wal اللهم مغفرتك أوسع من ذنوبنا ورحمتك أرجع عندنا من أعمالنا اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا سامحنا وعافنا وعفو عنا من شر أنفسنا وخلقك سلمنا اللهم فرج الكرب عن المكروبين ونفس الهم عن المهمومين كن مع أخوينا في سوريا يا رب العالمين اللهم كن مع أخوينا في فلسطين اللهم كن مع أخوينا في العراق وفي مصر وفي أفغانستان وفي ليبيا وحيث ما كان ظلم وقهر يا الله اللهم كن مع أخوائنا في ميانمار وفي الصومال وفي نيجيريا اللهم كن مع أخوائنا في كل مكان يا رب العالمين اللهم ارفع الظلم والضيم عن أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم ردنا إليك ردا جميلا تب علينا توبة النصوحة اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولمن علمنا ولمن له حق علينا ولمن أحسن إلينا ولمن أسأنا إليه اللهم ثبتنا على الحق والهدى نحن ووالدينا وأزواجنا وأحبابنا وذرياتنا والمسلمين أجمعين يا رب العالمين اللهم يا حي يا قيوم اختم لنا بخاتمة السعادة واجعلنا من أهل الحسن وزيادة صلي وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعبد والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى 
وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله الاكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون اغتروا الى الامام وافسحوا لاخوانكم بليز كم فورورد اند ميك سبيس فور يور